So on behalf of Erie Arts and Culture, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the first annual Arts and Agency Week, a virtual event designed to explore the ways that arts are being leveraged to raise awareness of systemic issues, amplify underrepresented voices, and generate creative solutions to societal challenges. Funding for Arts and Agency Week was provided in part by the Erie Community Foundation through their Shaping Tomorrow grant program. My name is Heather Casper. I am the Executive Director with the Sisters of St. Joseph Neighborhood Network. Founded by the Sisters of St. Joseph of Northwestern Pennsylvania 20 years ago, the network provides leadership, advocates for local residents, and partners with the broader community to develop opportunities for both personal growth and neighborhood revitalization. Today, I have the distinct privilege of introducing you all to Vidra Chandler. Vidra Chandler was born and raised in Camden, New Jersey. She graduated from Harvard University with a degree in government before pursuing careers in business, music, and community development. After several years in the private sector, Vidra's heart led her away from corporate America and to the open road where she joined the touring company of the hit Broadway musical, Hairspray. After Hairspray, Vidra performed in various theater projects until 2010, when she ran away with the circus to perform the role of soul singer on Cusa by Cirque du Soleil. I need to say that again. There's never a time I'm gonna introduce somebody again. I think in my life, I'm gonna be able to say that they ran away with the circus. Love it. <laughs> Today, Vidra is back in her hometown of Camden, New Jersey, where she worked for two years as Associate Director of the Neighborhood Center Incorporated. At the Neighborhood Center, Center Vidra developed programs to cultivate creativity and stimulate critical thinking in young people. Before accepting her current position of Community Events Manager at Cooper's Ferry Partnership, where she uses the arts as a vehicle to tap into the potential of Camden City and its residents, and revitalize underutilized spaces through the Connect the Lots initiative and a new view, Camden. Vidra serves on the board at Perkins Center for the Arts, as president of the board of directors at the Ritz Theater Company, and as a proud member of the Camden County Arts and Heritage Commission. She's a member of the Mass, the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, and she performs with her musical ensemble, CPR, Music Invincible, on the third Thursday of each month at the Lichter Lofts on the Camden Waterfront. The motto of the city of Camden is, in a dream, I saw a city invincible, and art is one of the vehicles tapping into the potential of Camden and fueling a resurgence of this city invincible. Deidre Chandler is with us today to speak about the city's work with Connecting the Lofts. Connecting the Lots is a community-driven initiative to activate Camden, New Jersey's parks and underutilized spaces, spaces through the implementation of artistic, cultural, and recreational projects and activities. The goals of the initiative are to engage Camden residents in neighborhood transformation, create safe nodes of activity, and to bring vibrancy to Camden's corridors and public spaces. This presentation is live streamed through Zoom, as well as Erie Arts and Culture's Facebook page and YouTube channel. The session will conclude with a Q&A session. If you have questions, please type them into the Zoom chat box. At the end of the presentation, I will read those questions to Vidra for answering. Thank you so much for being with us today for the presentation. We hope you enjoy it. Thank you, Vidra, for being with us, and I'll hand it over to you now. Oh. Thank you, Heather. Hi, everybody. I'm Vidra Chandler. It's my distinct pleasure to be here today. I've been to Erie once or twice, so I'm really just excited to hear about all the cool work that's going on there as well, and equally as excited to share with you what we're doing here in Camden. So as Heather mentioned, I have a couple of projects that I'm working on related to vibrancy and um, arts and culture and social justice in Camden, New Jersey, and I'm going to talk about both of them today, Connect the Lots and A New View. So I'm going to share my screen so that we can check out my slideshow. All right. <clears throat> so as we mentioned, um, Connect the Lots and A New View Camden are two initiatives designed to add vibrancy to Camden's parks and open spaces. And also A New View specifically is designed to bring awareness to an important civic issue in the city of Camden. 
So we've been doing a lot of kind of playing around with art for enjoyment, art for social justice. And of course, we'll talk about all that stuff and hopefully people have questions about our journey. So Camden, New Jersey is a small city just um, east of Philadelphia, just across the Delaware River. It was a booming industrial center. I'm sure some folks in this webinar can identify with that until it wasn't anymore, right? <laughs> and the industry started to leave and some um, many aspects of the Camden community were left neglected, buildings in a state of disrepair. We are currently in an age of revitalization. So I know that that can be a controversial subject for some. Some are super excited about that. Sometimes change is scary. So, um, you know, we'll talk about that here and there in the presentation as well. But Camden is, for better or for worse, for whatever opinions people have about it, absolutely positively, things are changing in the city. And it's actually very exciting for me to be able to use, uh, make sure that the arts and the arts community are an integral part of whatever is happening here and making sure that things reflect the community. A little bit about myself, Heather told you, but I was a, after graduating from Harvard, I pursued a short career in business, learned a lot, but really knew at the end of that part of my life that I was interested in doing things that or working in professions that made something other than just money. So I went off and started a career as a singer, which is something that I've been doing my whole life, singing and dancing, but not professionally. I was um, actually offered a role in the national tour of Hairspray before I went on tour with Kuza. So I did Hairspray for a few years, which is how I made it to Erie. I did um, a couple of other regional theater shows. And then the picture on the left is me as the singer in Cirque du Soleil's Kuza. It was a big top show. That took me to all 50 states, Canada, Japan, and most of Europe, which while I was on the show, it's been lots of other places, but that was my, my route. And now that I'm home, I perform with my band CPR Music Invincible. Um, we've actually just had a little bit of a band shakeup following COVID, but we're, back, we're really excited um, to get back together and get out there performing again. <clears throat> so Connect the Lots, as you heard, is a community-driven initiative to activate Camden, New Jersey's parks and underutilized spaces. We do this through the implementation of artistic, cultural, and recreational programming and projects. And the goals, of course, are to engage Camden residents in neighborhood transformation. As I mentioned, neighborhood transformation is happening. And we, of course, want to make sure that residents and artists, the arts community, are engaged in that transformation. We also um, create safe nodes of activity and bring vibrancy to Camden's corridors and public spaces. So the slide that you're looking at is, I think, uh, just a recent example of kind of the progression of adding vibrancy to some of our open spaces, specifically park spaces. So Camden has lots of parks and also has some land that maybe is just traditionally underutilized, like the picture at the top of RCA Pier, which is a parking lot. That's how it looked my entire childhood, my whole youth growing up in the city of Camden. There were different activities there, um, but, you know, kind of sporadically, like if any people could kind of come up with ways to program the parking lot, they would, but the parking lot is not necessarily something that people think of as programmable. However, a park is, and so as waterfront development continued, Cooper's Ferry actually had a hand in developing what is now RCA Pier Park, which you can see in the center slide, and then on the slide at the bottom, you can see what Connect the Lots kind of steps in and activates that park for community use. So this is actually a full disclosure, a picture of my band. We were one of the first to perform at RCA Pier Park, um, and we had a great time doing that. And, you know, the, the takeaway there is, of course, that you can, you can build it and you, you hope that people will come. But sometimes when things are going on, people don't know. So one of the ways that, you know, Connect the Lots gets in there is to make sure that by activating these spaces, we inform people that these are safe spaces, that these are, these are community spaces. We have performers that are from the community. We have events that are representative of the community. And then we can invite people from the community to enjoy some park and open space um, so that they can know that it's there. They can know that it's for them. And I tell you, I visit this park frequently and it is very, very popular and um, we're very, very proud of the work that we've been able to do at RCA Pier. Again, just kind of one example of a park that was revitalized and then activated. This happens frequently um, in recent years. Can Cooper's Ferry Partnership has been involved in the redesign and refurbishment of several city parks. And sometimes citizens are loath to use those parks because of kind of their lingering associations with the space, right? Maybe the park 
had in the past decades been used for <clears throat> some untoward activity. And now that these park spaces are being revitalized with community input, um, they're open for business. And so Connect the Locks is a lot in terms of activating those spaces. A couple of other spaces that we've been able to activate are Roosevelt Plaza Park. You can see that we had a salsa dance party there. This is a, a park in front of Camden City Hall. City Hall is downtown. Downtown is like a little less neighborhoody than some other parts of town. So we found it very important to invite people to this space to make sure that they use it and understand it as a space that is welcoming and, and for them and programmable, right, by other people. It's not just Connect the Lots that programs these parks in open spaces, but we want other people to do it too. Um, moving, I guess, counterclockwise, we have a huge um, arts and music festival that we do in non-COVID years called Camden Night Gardens. And this is the shot from that uh, festival, which is at Cooper's Point Waterfront Park. And we'll talk a little bit about, a little bit more about that park later because it pertains to a new view, but Cooper's Point Waterfront Park was once the home of the New Jersey State Penitentiary, a privately owned prison that was situated just along the Camden waterfront. The residents of North Camden actively fought the construction of this prison and fought the prison's existence every year that it was there. It blocked off resident access to the water, again, kind of like a private industry that's providing, that's it's disconnecting the community from our natural resources and assets. The prison ended up being torn down, closing and being torn down um, just as part of the life cycle of business. And once that happened, a vacant lot was left behind. The first Camden Night Gardens event was actually planned on that vacant lot. And the data from that event were used to lobby the state to transform this space into a park for community use. And this effort was successful. And now we have a park where a prison used to be. Uh, when you keep going kind of counterclockwise, that's just a shot of Camden Peace Games, another initiative that Camden uh, Connect the Lots has used to kind of engage youth in thinking about how we should treat our parks and open spaces and use them. And then probably our favorite event in the top right, which is Camden Jam, which has been held in several parks in the city of Camden. This last, the last Camden Jam that we did featured Maya as our um, main event and we had a great 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 time so we just get the gym some other things that connect the lots does is um kind of activate even smaller spaces so you can see the yoga that happens that's happening in the bottom we have some really awesome yoga instructors that come out and leave free fitness classes in various parks throughout the city on various days throughout the summer we didn't do this last year but we are bringing it back this year and the residents are very excited the picture of the folks in canoes is one of our favorite events. This is I Paddle Camden. This is part of our Explore Camden series where we ask residents to kind of get out and think about corridors in a different way, right? So as I just spent a long time explaining, Camden is situated on the Delaware River. The river can be used for recreational activities. Um, the frequency with which residents use the river for recreational activities is, is low compared to maybe some outsiders or people who are bring, coming in on their kayaks. This is increasing. And with Connect the Lots' iPaddle event, we continue to invite folks out for maybe what might be their first canoe trip on the Delaware. Guided trip, safe conditions, um, all led by members of Urban Trekkers, a community canoe building and uh, river guide program. And just getting people out on the water to interact with what is another underutilized space in the city of Camden. And then on the top right, you can see iBike Camden. There I am again, having a great time. Um, but iBike, a similar initiative to introduce folks to the expanding trails network in the city of Camden. We have been doing a lot of work with different coalitions and bike enthusiasts and um, working to expand the trails network to include uh, over road and uh, next to road trails in the city of Camden and we've come quite a long way. So this event is just one way that we encourage residents and visitors to join us by bike, bike around town, see what's new, see what's happening, but also familiarize themselves with different infrastructure improvements and um, activate some of space that is designed to be used by residents. We've also done a fair amount of public art projects and with the Connect the Lots program that I'm particularly proud of. These are three that I was personally involved with. <clears throat> the one at the swimming pool um, was done in collaboration with Rutgers Camden Center for the Arts and the Human Services Departments. We worked with kids from Camden summer camps 
to create this amazing like fish mural on the steps of their pool. I wish I had the before picture. I'm so sorry about that, but you can imagine it was very gray. <laughs> and this looks so bright. And we just kind of, you know, all of these are different examples of community led community. Um, yeah, like com community involved mural projects. And it takes, you know, a specific kind of um, dedication to involvement in order to pull off projects like this, right? Like it's one thing to hire a muralist and have them paint a mural. But luckily, our connections with Rutgers Camden Center for the Arts have really made the selection of muralists who are willing to work with the community and have that skill as part of their skill set easier to do and to the point where we've been able to install several murals where the community has had uh, been extremely hands-on, including the one with the Campbell Soup Cans and Andy Warhol and Nipper there. The members of um, the Cooper Grant neighborhood got together on the weekends and painted this mural in sections by numbers before the muralists applied it to the wall and they were all involved sometimes in heated discussion about what the content of the mural might be, but I think everybody's really satisfied with the results. And the one in the bottom is actually a mural currently in progress. This is just an image placed on a picture, but this mural is being painted right now in Kramer Hill section of Camden on River Road on a business called Munchy Time Pizza, a very prominent location, a very, you know, uh, this is a business that is very near and dear to community members. And um, we're just really excited to be a part of this. We held online community meetings to source neighborhood input on the mural content here. You really wanted something that was welcoming people to Kramer Hill and also welcoming Kramer Hill residents home to that neighborhood. Another one of our favorite Connect the Lots activities is outdoor movie nights. Um, last year due to COVID, we did all drive-in movies and we're actually planning to do the same again this summer. So this is just one of our drive-in movie nights where People pull up to that same park down the waterfront that once, you know, used to be a prison and now provides stunning views of Philadelphia and the water to Camden residents and more. And it's a great location for us to have a movie night. So we pop up a big blow up screen. We ask people to register in advance and they come down to these parks. And when we, we ask, of course, our participants to complete surveys and um, it's pretty much half of the people every time that come to these events, especially these movie nights, like the very popular events that report that this is their first time like being at this park. And it's not always that it's their first time like being in the space, right? But it's their first time since it was a park. So we feel really good about the fact that we're helping people to, inviting people to these open spaces. And of course, everybody answers that they would be excited to return again. So that's most of what Connect the Lots is about. Of course, we do lots of other things, but I want to save time to talk about our current project called A New View Camden that is opening on Earth Day, which is in just nine short days. I think nine, oh goodness, I think we're down to eight days from now in Camden, New Jersey. It's a really exciting project and I can't wait to share my slides. <clears throat> so A New View Camden, social justice, illegal dumping, arts and culture. A few years back, the City of Camden, Cooper's Ferry Partnership, and Rutgers Camden Center for the Arts collaborated on a grant to Bloomberg Philanthropies. We entered a call to their public art challenge, which asks cities of a certain size to address an important civic issue via public art. Our idea, um, which turned into a winning idea, was for a new view Camden. And out of 240 cities, Camden was one of five cities selected to receive this grant from Bloomberg to produce our art project. So I'll start with the issue here. I think that many people can identify with the issue of illegal dumping, but in Camden, this is a $4 million a year problem. We have folks coming in, contractors from out of town, crossing the bridge, driving into the city, finding a dark corner or a vacant lot and dumping refuse there that they should otherwise have taken to a dump and paid shipping fees for. Consequently, when we discover this dumping, our Department of Public Works goes out, picks up this trash, and then takes it to the dump. And then we incur the tipping fee, in addition to the fees that we have to pay people to go out and pick up other people's trash. It is an environmental hazard. It is completely unfair and unjust. And it is also a terrible eyesore for the people living in Camden, and it provides a horrible view for anybody who's passing through. Many of these illegal dumping sites are hidden, but just as many are in plain view of the public, which is why we entitled the project A New View. By repurposing these sites for community use and arts installations, we are hoping to provide a new view to people of the city of Camden. The diagram at the left is just meant 
to introduce you to the Camden Collaborative Initiative, which is an ongoing project that unites different organizations in the city that are focused on environmental issues to discuss how to address those issues. This is an area in which our local government is not fully, uh, is not at capacity in terms of being able to address these issues. So these, these folks get together. They're actually meeting right now as we speak different, um, you know, folks from the trash collection places and the landfill and the people who process our sewage, people who are doing planting community gardens, all kinds of environmentalists or environmentally impactful organizations working together to find solutions. And illegal dumping has long been on the list of issues that the CCI has been working to tackle, which is how we got cameras in certain places and a lot of the data that we use to support this grant. A new view happens at six sites in the city of Camden, all along major transportation corridors and also embedded inside of neighborhoods. So the first, you see that from the bottom to the top, we've just labeled them in order. This is the first site. This is the site at Pershing Street, which is in the Whitman Park neighborhood of Camden. And um, this is the only before picture that I'll show that is relevant to an actual illegal dumping site, but I think it's pretty impactful. This is the way that this site looked on the very first day that I visited it. This site is relatively close to my house, but I've never seen it because it's like tucked around a corner and I just, maybe I don't look up when I'm on the patco <laughs> at this point because I'm like, oh, I'm almost home. But as you can see, it's basically eye level with the train. About 65,000 people take that train every, every day in a non-COVID time. So looking out your window and seeing a pile of trash like this is not necessarily inspiring um, good feelings in the passersby about the city of Camden. And what you can't see is that from where I'm standing and on three sides around the site, there are homes. So the people in this neighborhood kind of, they report waking up to trash like this. You know, they're waking up to piles of tires, trash bags, TVs left behind by illegal dumpers in the middle of the night. And of course, calling the Department of Public Works, asking them to come and pick it up. But of course, these are fees that we incur that are completely unfair and unnecessary. On this site, which is current, which has been cleaned, of course, and greened a little bit. We are expecting Invincible Cat to arrive. I think this cat arrives this weekend. This is a monumental panther made completely out of recycled car hoods. So what's exciting about this is, is a couple of things. Of course, its positioning allows it to kind of give a nice look into the train at the people passing by. And also the panther is the mascot of Camden High School, which the artists who presented this um, project did not know when they presented it. It was pretty, pretty much serendipity. So we're excited to have Invincible Cat. The next site is called the Bioinformatic Digester. This is going in a very large piece of land that has full sun. We are expecting to plant lots of flowers and vegetation around the site that we're going to work very hard to keep water during the summer months. But in the center will be this machine in the garden, this machine uses mealworms to digest styrofoam waste from electronic packaging, not your food waste, but kind of the stuff that comes in the box when you get the TV. You put these pieces of styrofoam inside that little tesseract business at the bottom and the mealworms digest it and their waste is uh, organic uh, compound that can be used as mulch. It is, of course, not a long-term solution to our styrofoam problems, but something that encourages visitors to think about these issues in a new way, think about new possibilities for waste disposal, and of course, also to think about how our insect friends, um, you know, share this planet with us and what role they kind of play in our lives. So this is a um, very scientific application, I think, of art to this project. The third is the turntable, which is now almost fully constructed. This is another shot of that same park, Cooper's Point Waterfront Park that we love so much. Turntable is a reference to Camden's history with RCA Victor, as well as um, uh, some windmills that are supposedly buried underneath Delaware River somewhere. So this is made of pl cut plastic bottles, which you can see up close in the top right corner. And those are what is kind of in this large photo around the top. And really right now, if you go today, it covers the whole sculpture as well as recycled, well, I think they're not recycled, but as well as um, face masks <laughs> that are the, create the Oculus inside the dome. It is an actual turntable, it spins. And on each of the legs of the turntable, there is a QR code that will take you to um, 
a song that was recorded in Camden, New Jersey on the RCA Victor label. So a lot of historical references here. And this is, I think, our only kinetic sculpture. So when the wind blows, this sculpture turns. And we're excited about that. The fourth sculpture is actually touching the earth. And we only have a rendering because these folks will not start building this sculpture until next um, week. Right, they're coming in. This is an entirely community build out of adobe clay with a working clay oven, clay uh, pizza oven in the center. So neighbors will be invited to participate in working with the clay, getting their hands dirty, and building parklets around the pizza oven so that they can enjoy in a beautiful lot that is has been cleaned and greened by another neighborhood organization and has been that way for many years, but is still plagued with illegal dumping. We actually removed about a dumpster's worth of contractor waste from this site last week in preparation for this inst installation. One of our favorites is Mechan 11, the collector. This is probably the most meta piece of art that we have around a new view. He's a giant 15 foot robot. He's a trash collector. He has a spear that he's using to pick up a washing machine and a sack of trash strewn over his back. His eyes glow and so does his heart chamber. And his heart chamber was designed by students from Camden's Creative Arts, Morgan Village Academy High School. There were several applications submitted in two dimensions and Tyler Fuqua, the artist that is there um, sanding the robot's head, he and his partners went through them all and chose one to turn into a 3D heart chamber for the robots. This is their fifth robot. All of them have a personalized heart chamber, but ours is like uber personal. It's made from all, the heart is made from all recycled materials and they unveiled the winner during a Zoom call. And I think that the, the artist, the young artist was pretty emotional about seeing her two-dimensional drawing come to life in such a breathtaking way. So we're really, really excited. This, this robot is also going to be the feature of our ribbon cutting event on Earth Day. The final site location is the Phoenix Festival. This is created by some artists out of Boston who make avian avatars. Um, and they've created two for us that represent prominent environmentalists in our city. Ours are representing Senator Nielsa Cruz Perez, who's from Camden, New Jersey via Puerto Rico, and um, the late Rodney Sadler, who was one of the main advocates in getting the prison removed from the waterfront and helping us to install a waterfront park. The avatars overlook a amphitheater that can be used for live public events. And it are, is decorated by flags painted by the students at Dudley School, which is a neighborhood school whose mascot is the Phoenix. You can see down on the bottom, we have a handful of folks saying hi. Those are our artist apprentices. When we started this process of selecting artists for a new view, and I, which I didn't talk about, we have two uh, project curators, Kimberly Camp and Judith Tenenbaum, who um, were just fantastic. And they sorted through about 135 applications from artists all around the world before choosing the eight that we would use for this project. We did have several applications come from the city of Camden. A couple of those artists were chosen, but we noticed that there, while there were talented artists from the city applying, they didn't have experience in the creation of large-scale public art. So we decided right from the beginning that we would develop an apprenticeship program. And this, that's who you see in that picture. These folks are young artists from the city who are interested in public art and have experience in art, maybe are an art school or school for arts or do their own things on Instagram that are pretty impressive and are working alongside of our professional artists to gain the skills um, necessary for us to hopefully carry this tradition of creating public art into the future right here in the city of Camden. Now, of course, I'm not, <laughs> I took my art and went all over the world and I hope that everybody does too. But, um, you know, whenever I talk to these, these people, these young people, I need to tell them the truth, which is that I'm super excited for the possibilities of public art in the city of Camden and for all of them to be a part of it. So this apprenticeship program has been really special to us. It gives us a lot of hope for what the future of public art might look like here in our city. A couple of other artists, I mentioned that we have eight artists and six sites. The two final artists that are working on this project are Tom Marchetti of the Factory Workers. Tom Marchetti's actually another Camden native. He was raised in the city of Camden. His family owned a machine shop that was, um, well, Tom was actually kind of a firsthand, had a front row seat to deindustrialization. So as different 
factories and whatnot started to close down around the city, they were like selling their machines back to the Marchettis and also distributing them to factories abroad, taking them, you know, wherever their factories were going in Asia, who knows where. Tom, uh, as a young adult, decided to hold on to some of these machines uh, rather than see them get shipped overseas and started a makerspace in a nearby town where he makes a ton of awesome stuff along with a bunch of other makers. And these pods are um, for his idea for what he could create for a new view. So there will be pod parks at each each a new view site. There will be tables, benches, um, shade structures. You see in the back there is an iron swing, all made of reclaimed materials, 150 year old wood that's been left out to rot from trees that have been cut down. Um, you know, different kinds of metals and steels and machine parts that would otherwise not be uh, repurposed. He's repurposing them all in a makeshift studio in South Camden for our project. So we're excited. And our eighth artist is Eric James Montgomery, who is a portrait photographer with a studio here in the city of Camden at the Fireworks Art Gallery. Eric did a project called Camden is Bright, Not Blight. And this project ended up going up last year during our COVID summer and COVID winter when we were all pretty bummed that we weren't able to unveil our large scale public art project the way we had thought we would. Camden took, uh, excuse me, Eric took socially distanced photographs of about 50 Camden residents and asked them to complete the sentence Camden is. Again, this project is a lot about kind of what Camden is and what Camden isn't, right? Like Camden is not a dump. Camden is um, a place full of people who are living here and loving it and thriving and striving against all kinds of different circumstances, just like any other community but with a, a unique set of challenges. And these portraits, portraits really brought to life kind of the feeling that Camden residents have about our city, perhaps versus what somebody riding by on the train looking at a pile of trash might think about the city. So as you can see from these pictures, we have Camden is life, Camden is creative, evolutionary, vision-driven, my future, evolving, unbreakable, reinventing, one of the um, one of my favorites that's not up here is Camden is up next. There's a Camden is worth it poster that I drove by the other day. Eric was able to attach these portraits to the windows of vacant homes in throughout the city of Camden. So as people tour a new view, they might catch a glimpse of some of Eric's portraits in the meantime. I'm actually going to take a quick pause there because we have a video related to Eric's project that I want people to see before I keep going. Hey, 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 big strides. We are, we believe, we are proud. Every small action has a big consequence. And your small actions are impacting me. One bad apple can poison the whole tree. We walk on the pile lands of those before us, business in the eyes. Our city is not a junkyard. It is a garden with beautiful flowers grow. Because a road can go from concrete, but from trash it will not show. The trash in the soil is causing turmoil and the flowers to wilt. I've seen the streets covered in crushed cans. I've seen your trash turn to despair. I've seen the poison in the air. We, we want to reach the stars, but we can't, can't see them anymore. anymore. People are getting sick because of your indifference. Our children grow up in dirt because you fail to see our work. Talk to never little, but to Josh, mercy anywhere. People love to see the beauty in Camden, but it's all around us. Stop. Stop talking about the trash if you're the one who put it here. Stop. Stop trashing our city when you don't take time to see its beauty. Stop. Stop thinking where your open trash can. Because, because there's so much more you don't take the time, time to see. We are beautiful. We are rising. We are the future. We, we are Camden. Camden. Period. That video was created by our videographer at 1122 Productions. His name is Rod Smith. I just want to give him a shout out because he's amazing. And um, I think it says a lot about the project, so I won't elaborate on that. One of the things that a new view Camden is doing is spreading awareness about how residents can get involved in the fight against illegal dumping in the city. So that Camden Collaborative Initiative that I talked about earlier, where different organizations get together to um, troubleshoot environmental issues, came up with a reporting tool called Camden Reports, where residents can anonymously um, 
let the authorities know if they see illegal dumping in their neighborhood. It is also used to report flooding, which is a big problem um, that is difficult to collect data on because it floods and then it goes away. So we, we have asked residents to log into this website so they can report this activity so that we can identify hotspots, understand which places might benefit from a security camera or maybe even a public art intervention. And if you want to see some of these projects, I, I, was, I would call it live and in person, but streaming live on Facebook will be our ribbon cutting event on Earth Day, April 22nd at 10 a.m. You can log on to a new view Camden at Facebook and hear some speeches, see some sculpture, hear from some of our artists, lots of other really amazing videos that we were able to produce over the course of the project. And um, yeah, if you are planning a trip to South Jersey at any time between now or between April 22nd and October 31st, I highly encourage you to swing through Camden, New Jersey. Um, you can log on to our website at anewviewcamden.com and take the virtual or take the audio tour of the sculptures, learn a little bit more about the city, the artists, and of course, our uh, fight against illegal dumping and um, and towards vibrancy and cultural co-creation in the city. Thank you. That is my presentation, and I hope that you guys have questions. Thank you, Vidra. Thank you so much. That we do have a couple of questions here. I'm going to start us off, though. Um, holy cow! I don't. I almost don't even know where to start because you just showed us so many like. 40 full minutes of brilliant projects. Um, they're all exciting from the new, the upcoming new view projects to RCA Pier, the worms digesting styrofoam, um, the prison, the park where the prison was. I mean, these are really compelling stories, all of them. Is there one or are there standouts among them that you see as maybe the most transformative or maybe the most unexpected or maybe that you're most proud of? For sure. I mean, I think it probably at this point goes without saying that the, the prison transformation to the park is one that has really meant a lot to me. I was not working for this organization when that happened, um, but I was, you know, on tour and also visiting Camden and was like, what is happening? <laughs> what is going on? Are they taking that down? Um, I was thrilled to see our waterfront opened up and reconnected to our neighborhoods. And I, and I can't tell you how many people share this sentiment. I was flyering for our night gardens event one year. And um, well, actually, this is a little bit of a, a two-tone story. So, and um, I don't know, this spoke to me, right? Because a lot of times, like I looked at this, so I looked at this, prison being gone and this park being built as this amazing sign of progress. Like, oh, like the community finally got something that they asked for, is being listened to. And not only is the prison gone, but it is community space. Like it's park space. Like we can all use it. We can activate it with public art. We can have a movie night. So I'm, fly I'm flying for our night gardens event um, in the neighborhood out east a little bit. And they were like, well, where is this? They were like, we never heard of this park. It was in a barbershop. And I was like, Cooper's Point Waterfront Park. I was like, oh, it's where the prison used to be. And they were like, oh, they put a prison there? White people must be coming back. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, so there's that too, right? Like, that's part of what is compelling to me about this work is that there is a fine line between progress and gentrification. And people are happy to see some of these things happen, but people are also have their antennas up for whether or not these are truly community assets, if you will. Now, I'll tell you firsthand, like I go to this park all the time. I take my daughter to the playground there and we are, the community is absolutely availing themselves of this park. Like we love this park. This is a beloved Camden City treasure at this point. But again, um, I think a really kind of a representative sample of the some of the climate around some of the arts activations and cultural activations that happen in the city. People are interested in kind of like what the plan is. Yeah, wonderful. Can you, can you talk about the partnerships that you've had to form? Um, I, I know, uh, and many of us watching this know that um, these kind of things aren't, they, ha they require such a large group of people to help with. How does that look? 
for some mm-hmm. of the projects on your end. This is great. I was actually speaking to a friend um, who was graduating from um, graduate school like a year or so ago. And the, and the person was like, oh, I'll be so glad when I don't have to do group projects anymore. And I was mm-hmm. like, what? Trust me. <laughs> this, never ends. Like, group, this, is a, this school is truly preparing you. The partnerships are are so rewarding and of course they are something that needs to be you know carefully managed and and we and we do that you know cooper's ferry has been working together with neighborhood organizations and other um you know community groups and like i mentioned Rutgers camden center for the arts so many times for so many years we would not be able to do this without these collaborations and these partnerships so even though Sometimes meeting with and working with new people can be, it can, of course, be a little bit sticky. There's a lot of overlap. There can sometimes be this idea when you're working on a project that that project is all we're working on, right? But no, of course, we all also have other projects that we're working on. So it, it can be challenging. But, um, you know, for example, one of, our pro- one of our partners in A New View is our Department of Public Works. They've been picking up this trash for so many years. They're deeply committed to seeing residents be inspired by this art and thus like more committed to this issue because that resident understanding of what's happening around illegal dumping will help them do their job so much. And they have been the most wonderful partners in this project. We find a piece of wood on a lot. They are there the next day to pick it up. We are trying to figure out how, where, how we're going to delineate parking so that people don't drive into a sculpture. They're there with a forklift moving, you know, concrete barriers around. And we, um, I think if anything can be true about these partnerships is that the partners are finding it difficult to thank the other partners enough. We're like, oh my gosh, like, thank you so much for your contributions to this project. You know, we have some people staying up till midnight working on, um, you know, insurance documents and equipment rentals and other people staying up till midnight crafting social media messages and, you know, creating do-it-yourself art projects, which are also on our website. Please check them out. So again, like that, that kind of like everybody picking up their own ball and doing you know, they, the, the saying, I guess, goes like, if you're in a room full of people and you don't know what to do, do the thing that only you can do. Um, and I think we've seen a lot of that in this specific partnership and um, our partnerships on other projects and events. It's been very rewarding. To short answer. Wonderful. All right. We have a couple of questions here. Laurel Mitchell um, has asked, can you please elaborate more about the apprenticeship that was started to help artists transition their practice to a public art focus? Sure. Yeah. Thank you for asking that question. So um, this has been an interesting program. We, we thought we it conceived of this program, like I mentioned, like right at the beginning of a new view. And then, look, I mean, we're going to, we all say it, right? COVID happened. <laughs> and then like so many things kind of got in the way that when we started, when we when it was time to pick up and actually be, start construction on this project, we were like, oh my gosh, that's right. Like we need apprentices. So we ended up putting it together a little bit last minute, but it was made possible, first of all, um, because of the lateness of the hour, we needed additional funding in order to make this work. So it was made possible by Subaru of America, who recently relocated their headquarters to Camden and has a philanthropic focus on job place readiness and and like workforce development. So um they were able to give us the funding to pay the artists. So we advertised the opportunity as an apprenticeship uh, that pays $27 an hour. We've got, I'd say about 30 applicants and prioritized the ones who were uh, local to the city of Camden and just assigned them to artists as they came to town. So some of our apprentices were like, what does the program consist of? Like, do I get, do we have an orientation and field trips? And I'm like, maybe the next one in 2024, when we don't have to wear face masks to go on a field trip. But right now, um, it's just like getting dirty and getting to know these artists. And again, like, maybe it's too good to be true, but it's been extremely rewarding. The artists have been very, very receptive to the help, very excited at the opportunity to be working with artists who want to learn from them, right? So sometimes you have like volunteers or, you know, other kinds of people working with you and it can be a little less um, synergy. But I've seen that because these young artists are are kind of fully aware of what our intention is, which is to help them cultivate these particular skills in addition to their own art skills. They've been very proactive about getting to know the 
um, artists that they've been working with. So we've been kind of just assigning them as the artists come in to kind of call me on month, on you know Friday and be like, okay, next week I plan to work this day, this day, this day. Who can you send me? And I go through the lists and I find out who's available. The apprentices all have full-time jobs or students. They have other commitments. So I figure out who's available and then I place them with artists. And when I check in the next day, they're like, this was great. <laughs> so, so far, so good. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, here's the next question. Acknowledging and naming illegal dumping to be a $4 million a year challenge makes a great cause for policy and programmatic investments to save the city and com- community substantial dollars every year. Kudos. So it's really not a question, but um, it's an issue here. And so I wonder how, how you um, best tackle that or, or you know, what's the, the first best step for us? Yeah, I mean... Look, I, yeah, it's an issue there. It's an issue in Trenton. It's a huge issue in Philadelphia. It's like completely out of control. Sorry, Philly. <laughs> and it is. And, um, you know, I think this speaks a lot to kind of that art for social justice piece, of, like in general, like, how, you know, how do we use art for activism? How can it be effective there? And, you know, we're very hopeful that this is, that this art kind of serves as a hook, right? So you're driving by, maybe you drive through Camden every day and you're going to see something different. You're going to, and it's already happened. I hate to say it, but we had somebody like looking so hard at one of the construction sites that they got into a car accident, right? Like they were like, yeah, I was there. Nobody was hurt. Everybody's okay. But they were like, what? Smash. So that's, you know, without the crash, like the, the question is the first part, like why is there now a giant bird where there used to be an incinerator and a pile of trash and Christmas trees? And then, and then we have, you know, so far, even during construction, we've had people just literally like stop their cars and ask that, what are you doing? And we're like, this is about illegal dumping, right? So just to get the, the, get folks thinking about it. And what I've found is that when I'm out doing stuff and I interact with residents, every a hundred percent of the time, a hundred percent of the time, when I talk to somebody about what I'm doing and why I'm in their neighborhood today, painting a tire, and I say a part project around illegal dumping, a hundred percent of the time, the person stops, turns and points and says like, oh yeah, it's always happening right there. Or, oh my gosh, this is such a big problem. It is so pervasive. It impacts the lives of so many residents. And it's because it is so, because it is so widespread, it is very difficult for people to believe that anybody is doing anything about it. And so with this project, I think that's one of the important things that we're trying to convey is that there are people doing things about it and there are people that care about it. You don't put art in places that you don't care about, right? So you do care about it. We do care about this neighborhood and, and the Department of Public Work is picking it up. And by spreading more awareness, hopefully we're able to address it in a better way. Maybe, look, it's not for me, right? All the time to come up with every single solution to every problem. But if I can ask as many people as possible to think about the problem, maybe somebody in the community has a, an amazing solution. And people have been really forthcoming with sharing their individual neighborhood solutions. So we get a lot of Instagram posts from our neighborhood partners when they're doing just a neighborhood cleanup, or we had a neighborhood partner that kind of woke up to 150 tires dumped behind her house. She called up our own neighbors, they painted the tires, they distributed them around the neighborhood as planters. Now, no, they shouldn't have to do this, but they did do it. And when they put it on Instagram, they tagged a new view Camden. And we were like, great, like everybody, let's, let's talk about this and let's join forces so that we also are comfortable reporting this issue, right? When you when you think you're alone or you think that nobody cares, you might get scared about like, oh, I'm not going to call the cops or oh, I'm not going to tell anybody. But if we're all talking about it and we all know, hopefully that empowers people to use the reporting tool, um, you know, call the authorities when they see it happening. We have to stand up for ourselves and hopefully this art project will give people the inspiration to do that. Thank you for that. I've got a question here from Patrick. Erie Arts and Culture. So he says, Vidra, over the last two years, you you discussed the value and benefits of community ovens. Can you share any insights you have about how a new view Camden approached that topic of the topic of liability and the logistics for a community oven integrated into that new sculpture that you have that you showed? 
I got to tell you, even though it was so, I mean, liability and logistics wise, <clears throat> it's our understanding of the, of this particular type of oven is that it's very difficult for accidents to occur. Of course, that, of course they can happen. We have lots of insurance, um, but we also are, um, we are experimenting with a, uh, security system so that you, so that the, so that somebody has to know when you're using the oven, right? So like, you, not like it's going to be hard, but just maybe on the oven, it says like, you want to use this, call this number. The person with the key comes, they unlock the oven. So at least we know you're there using it. This actually is a little tricky because the artists don't want this, right? Like the artists are like, no, this is a red oven. This is for everybody. And we're like, well, <laughs> we just want to make sure we're on standby in case any accidents happen. You know, we're really excited about the oven. We think the oven is a really cool thing. Um, even though we have addressed the issue of liability from a standpoint that, you know, the best that we can, we understand that that risk is there and we are, um, you know, we're keeping an eye on it. It's not like we're like, oh, this is going to be just fine. We, we're thinking about it. Thank you for asking the question. <laughs> All right. We've got about five minutes left and I have two more questions for you. So first, Camden has received national media attention for its police reform initiatives. Mm. Has the police department been a partner in your projects? They have. So one thing that uh, the police does their own outreach, like community, community policing. This is what's been in the news and the New York Times and everything. A lot of like pick up basketball games, barbecues. I see it in my neighborhood all the time. It's very nice. Um, because of COVID, they didn't do it last year and they don't want to do it this year. But what they're going to do this year is they are going to partner with us on our drive-in movie nights. So they're, um, they're going to be present at all of them in a, you know, a, a community relatable capacity. Sometimes maybe later in the summer, they might, you know, give away hot dogs. Um, but, uh, you know, they're going to, they're going to help us finance it. They're going to be there for it. They're going to give out definitely some kind of like prepackaged snack, like everybody get a bag of popcorn from their local police officer kind of thing. Um, so yes, the short answer is they do get involved in our activities. And of course, if we ever ask them, then they're, they're right there as well. But the guys that they do have their own kind of outreach platform that they do, um, and that they really like. So. All right, next one. Um, Another kudos, such inspiring examples. Congratulations. Um, she wonders how you work with city administration throughout these transformative, transformative projects, specifically at the beginning stages as you're deciding what to do with the sites. How do you work with this, the city administration? Sure. Well, one thing that um, made for a pretty seamless relationship with the city on this project is that we one of the reasons that we chose illegal dumping is because the mayor suggested it. <laughs> so he personally was pretty fed up with the problem and the amount of money that was coming out of the budget. So um, that made it particularly easy to kind of, you know, work with the city and get the city to cooperate kind of in the early and even in these late stages, but in the early stages of the project where there was a lot of writing and budgeting and, and just like idea making to do. Now our organization works closely with the city frequently because like a lot of our projects, not my projects, but some other people's projects in the organization are related to like infrastructure. So like rebuilding roads and filling potholes and things like that and like managing those funds and those grants. So our relationships are pretty strong there just from a history of working together. The city is also our an official partner in the Connect a Lots initiative and Connect a Lots was started in 2014. So in terms of arts and culture and vibrancy activities, we've actually been working very closely with the city to identify which parks we want to use and, you know, making sure we have complementary instead of conflicting programming going on. So um, it's been very, it's been a very fruitful relationship. You know, they, people, is, it, it, a lot of it is kind of just, and I'm glad you mentioned kind of the beginning. It's like using that beginning stage to sit down and talk about what we're going to do and making sure our goals align. We've had, we've had projects. I personally had a project that I wanted to do and the city was like, this just doesn't align with, with our goals. And it was kind of easy to be like, all right, throw it out the window, <laughs> move on to the next project and let's see what we can get to one where we all agree. Right. So uh, yeah, dumping, right. Like we all agreed. So it, it worked. Activating new parks, 
we all agreed. We we're like, let's go. You, you we have the, we're made, we'll, we're building the park. You're doing the movie night. Let's go. We got it. Right. So it has been, um, even though it can be bureaucratic and, you know, government is government. It has been a very nice relationship. Nice. Well, I do want to end with some thank yous, but do you have any sort of parting advice or comments for us before we have to close, close down the lunch hour presentation? Oh, this has been really nice. Um, thank you for listening to me go on and on about my projects. It's, it's funny how much time you spend kind of like buried in them and, and not talking about them. So it's very nice to be able to kind of just be like, this is what we're doing. And um, just, yeah, you know, this, this project has certainly inspired me to pursue other opportunities to use art to address our civic issues in the city of Camden. I think that sometimes it's fine just to do a mural for mural sake or art for art's sake, and that will also very much continue to happen. But um, I'm really looking forward to working with our apprentices and taking kind of the knowledge that we've gained here and say like, okay, right? Like I just mentioned infrastructure, like we have potholes everywhere. Is there an artistic solution to that? If there is, I think that I'll probably find it and maybe that'll be my next talk. So thanks mm -hmm. for listening. And um, I hope that you guys come to Camden and check out a new view and view our ribbon cutting online, April 22nd, 10 a.m., a new view on Facebook. Wonderful. Thank you, Vidra, so much for your time. Um, on behalf of Erie Arts and Culture, I will thank everybody who joined us here today uh, for this lunch hour presentation. Um, also, thanks to Erie Arts and Culture for putting this program together as a neighborhood um, manager. I, it's, it's been really eye-opening and enlightening for, for me as well. And of course, thanks to Erie Community Foundation for helping to fund it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, it, it, we, it's, it's just coming up on one o'clock, and we, I really appreciate being able to, um, to, to be with you here today, Vidra, and with everybody who joined us.